a lot of people's feelings got hurt, and that's the point. Black Shaker High School students sound off and walk out of class in protest. And it's all because of this front page article in the Shakerite newspaper. Black and white, shades of gray. Right. There is no white here. All they're talking yeah. about is black people. We feel that the black students in our school have not been working up to their potential and have not been achieving. And for that to be perceived as racist is simply unfair. The parents we talk to say the Shaker right is wrong. The editors of the paper should definitely not be printing articles of this nature. You know, they should not be printing stuff like this. In February 1997, in the Cleveland suburb of Shaker Heights, Ohio, the student newspaper ran a banner headline. A study of academic achievement showed black students doing much worse than white students. 80% of black students either failed a proficiency test or received a grade of D or F in at least one academic class. In sensationalizing the facts of the study, the article raised as many questions as it answered. If we were to break down those barriers... Were black students being told they were less intelligent than whites? Were students being blamed for the failings of the school? What was the root cause of the discrepancy? In a storm of controversy, a group of students called a public meeting of protest. Graydon McLennan and Susan Murray, high school seniors, videotaped the events of that spring for use in this film. I'll tell you why 80% of the black students haven't passed the proficiency test. Can you please tell me why? They expect us to pass the geometry portion of the test when most of the ninth graders that get here their freshman year take Algebra 1. What about students like me who have Algebra 1 two year A their first year, Algebra 1 two year B their second? I'm just now in geometry. I keep failing it, keep failing it. And then I'm thinking like, am I stupid? You know, it hurt. I sat at home, cried, looking at myself, pass, you'll never do, you'll never graduate. If I don't pass, I don't get senior status. <laughs> Don't say it's not that deep. Don't say it's not that big of a deal, even if you did pass on the first try. Look, they say 80% black. They talking about all of us. Just because you passed on the first try don't mean they ain't talking about you. Just because you ain't got these don't mean they ain't talking about you. OK, yeah, it's fact. I accept it. It's a reality check. It's a reality check. I've been these. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, <laughs> ain't nobody not trying to face it. Ain't nobody trying to face it. But you talking about solutions. Teach us some geometry in the eighth grade then. Teach us some geometry that way when we get here. That article was very disturbing, of course. But what is more disturbing to me is the general tone of this entire paper. I have not seen one person of color in this entire newspaper. I saw the cartoon. I saw the cartoon. The cartoon is not me, okay? The cartoon is not us. So that is even more insulting that they would put this little black little black baby that here. looks like something out of your oppression class. The advisor of this paper should be called on to resign immediately. achieve equality, everybody's trying to be on that same page. But when you take things like this and you take them and you make them one-sided, you're just breaking down all that work that we did. It makes me feel like I've done all this work for nothing. I've been friends with all these people just so they can come back and tell me, hey, you know what, because just because you were my friend doesn't mean anything, but you know what, you're less than me. You're not my friend anymore because you're not as good as me. I'm gonna uh, exert my parental right to break the rule. Okay. Unfortunately, I was one of those people that helped put those statistics together. We hadn't planned on those being uh, shown on the front page of the paper yet. They weren't ready to be released. We spent about a year and a half looking at data and statistics to see why. Because once more than one person has a piece of information, a thousand people have it. Okay? So more than one person had that information, so it ended up spread broadcast. But that really doesn't matter whether the information was generated and shown by, to more than one person. What really matters, what are we going to do based upon that information? Unfortunately, those statistics are valid and are accurate, but that's really of little importance. 
What are you going to do to change those? What are your teachers going to do to change those? And what are your parents going to do? And what are we in the general community going to do to help you to change those things? I empathize and I hurt with the young lady because I literally did not sleep for 48 hours after I first saw the statistics. I tried. <coughs> I'll speak in a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure what has to be overcome. I mean, there are a number of things that, that just jump to mind. I mean, the students, the black students have to stop being scared of taking AP classes. Um, they have to be not scared to work hard. Um, the white students have to stop being scared of the black students who are from Cleveland and who sound like they're from Cleveland when they talk. Um, the teachers have to stop being scared of the students who are different. Um, the administration has to encourage the black students to take the classes. The kids' parents, when they get home, have to encourage them to do their homework. Um, it's, there's something for everybody to do. <laughs> 